This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Missy Kohler. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. News 25 is also brought to you by Silver State Health, Pahrump's exclusive pediatric care clinic. Call 775-505-1214 for an appointment. Welcome to KPVM TV News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. I'm Missy Kohler. We hope you're having a lovely Wednesday, May 19th. Well, Nevada National Security Site is reporting a large brush fire. They have been fighting for the past two days with the help of the Bureau of Land Management. They say at 317 on May 17th, smoke was reported in a remote area of the Nevada National Security Site. Fire and Rescue responded and confirmed that there is a wildland fire burning in the northern section. It is being referred to as the Cherrywood Fire. No injuries have been reported. The fire is not burning and has not burned any contaminated areas. No structures or assets are in danger. The burn area is estimated at 1,700 to 2,200 acres. BLM crews are providing aerial assets and ground support. Current containment of the fire is estimated to be at 30%. For more information, you can go to the Nevada National Security Site's Facebook page or use the hashtag NNSSEvent. Knight County says the courthouse in Pahrump will be named for Gerald Bear Smith, the bailiff who worked in the building for 17 years before passing away from COVID-19 related complications earlier this year. On Tuesday, the Board of County Commissioners unanimously approved the resolution to name the courthouse within the Ian Deutsch Government Complex at 1520 East Basin Avenue in his honor, four months to the day of Smith's passing at age 60. The courthouse includes the Pahrump Justice Courts, 5th Judicial, Di Judicial District Courts, District attorney's office and the county clerk's office placement of commemorative signing at the building will happen at a later date well news 25 reported on a hit and run accident that occurred on may 7th on may 7th on gamebird and winchester Nye county sheriff's office now has a suspect in custody for that crash the sheriff's office stated that the victim was heading southbound in a red Dodge Challenger on Homestead. The victim said there was a white sedan parked off the side of the road with its lights off. The driver of that car was later identified as Michael Murphy. The victim stated that he reduced his speed as he was about to the sedan, and that is when Murphy allegedly suddenly made a U-turn in front of the red Challenger, causing the collision. According to the declaration of arrest, Murphy fled the scene at a high rate of speed, continuing southbound on Homestead, turned westbound on West Gamebird to South Winchester Avenue. At that point, the vehicle proceeded southbound on a desert trail off Gamebird in Winchester. The victim gave chase after the suspect through the desert and stated that Murphy held an object out of the window which looked like a possible firearm. Deputies made contact with Murphy's girlfriend, who stated that she was driving and noticed her vehicle, a white Buick sedan, had damage to the rear bumper that contained red paint transfer that was consistent with the collision. Murphy reportedly was the only person that had access to the Buick and was last seen driving the car and did not come home that night. Deputies were given access to a map of GPS tracking of Murphy's cell phone that allegedly showed him traveling on Homestead Road to Gamebird and Winchester through the desert where the Challenger was found. Michael Murphy was placed into custody by Nevada Parole and Probation and is being charged with hit and run. A driver reported as possibly driving under the influence led law enforcement on a pursuit in Beatty. Deputies were dispatched to locate a possible DUI driver on US 95 near mile marker 27. The vehicle was located and while the deputy was running the driver's information, a male sitting in the rear passenger seat became visibly agitated and yelled out of the car. The deputy told the man to relax and at that time the vehicle re-entered the northbound travel lane and quickly accelerated away. After a brief pursuit that reached speeds of 92 miles per hour, the vehicle came to a stop near mile marker 44. The female driver was taken out of the vehicle and placed into wrist restraints and then taken into custody. The male passenger, identified as Philip Maida, who was still agitated, followed orders to step out of the vehicle and walk to the deputy. He was placed into custody and wrist restraints. He then became angry and started to be belligerent and slammed his head on the hood of the patrol vehicle. Maida was taken to the ground where he remained calm. He was placed into the patrol vehicle until medics arrived to assess him. While being examined by medics, 
Alex, Maida reportedly spontaneously uttered that he made the female drive off. He put the car in drive and pushed her leg down on the gas pedal. Maida's information was checked and returned with extraditable warrants for arrest. Philip Maida was arrested for arrest on another agency warrant, false statement to obstruct a public officer, coercion with force or threat of force and damage, and destroying state property. And we'll be right back with more News 25. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back. President Biden plans to spend big to accelerate the use of electric vehicles and energy efficient transportation. And new home construction tumbled in April, blamed in part on the surge in lumber prices. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. Top your news, President Joe Biden is giving a big plug to electric vehicles. The president toured Ford's plant in Dearborn, Michigan, where the F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck is being built by the UAW. The president plans to spend $174 billion on charging stations and energy-efficient transportation as part of his $2.3 trillion infrastructure plan. Shares of electric vehicle makers, including Lordstown Motors and Fisker, are both moving higher. Senate Republicans are offering a slimmer infrastructure proposal and, according to Fox Business News, suggest paying for the bill by raising the gas tax. Checking the economy, home construction took a surprising tumble, falling 9.5% in April. Economists blame in part the surge in lumber prices. Lumber prices are finally starting to cool off. To find out where you can see us every day, go to businessfirstam.com. Jason Gall made an appearance this week in Judge Lane's courtroom as attorneys prepare for his retrial. Gal was granted a reversal of conviction and retrial after having been found guilty in 2019 for incest, use of a minor in producing pornography, lewdness with a child under 14, child abuse, and statutory sexual seduction. The Nevada Supreme Court granted the reversal of conviction after his attorney argued that the district court abused its discretion by restricting the cross-examination of the state's primary witness regarding potential bias. At the time, Gal had been involved in a lawsuit he brought against the county, it was a civil lawsuit that accused the Nye County Sheriff's Office of mishandling evidence. The defense wanted to question then-Detective David Barukowitz about the lawsuit to attempt to prove that there was bias in the investigation. Sheriff Sharon Worley testified that although Barukowitz was involved in the wrongdoing leading to the lawsuit settlement, she said Gal's lawsuit did not bias the investigation. The district court restricted Gal's questioning of Barukowitz, finding that the inquiry was not relevant and would confuse the jury, and if allowed, it could be more prejudicial than probative. Gal and his attorney, Emily Strand, were in court for a status check regarding discovery. Strand is from the Public Defender's Office and has been newly assigned to the case. Strand asked that the District Attorney's Office provide them all the information they have on the case for their defense. It was also stated that a settlement conference was in the process of being scheduled. The new court date was originally set to begin on June 22nd, but the defense asked to extend that date because the Public Defender's contract would soon be up for renewal. Judge Lane set a calendar call on the case for October 4th with the jury draw and trial taking place November 9th through the 19th. Well, Chief Scott Lewis, Director of Emergency Management, gave his report regarding the status of the COVID-19 outbreak and things continue to improve. Today, we remain out of flag status in Nye County. There have been additional new cases received and there is a report of one additional death. Uh, vaccination wise, we have vaccinated over 24,000 people. We are in an initial stage of transitioning, as we may recall, we talked about this about two months ago of our plan to transition back to the health side of the house and away from DEM. That coincides with what the state is also doing. So what that will look like, our county health nurses will pick up the additional slack on the lowering numbers and then lowering requirements for ordering product, the pods, and also vaccinating within the county health nurse offices in conjunction with our medical providers, our clinics, our pharmacies, the hospital, et cetera. DEM will not be divorced from the process. We will continue to vaccinate regularly on for this second dose pods that are already prescribed on the reverse side of their cards. We will also be holding first dose pods every Wednesday from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m at DEM on Siri Lane 
So it's every Wednesday, 7 to 10 in the morning on Siri Lane. And we will hold any necessary pods that would need to be completed throughout the remainder of the county as well. So if we have a target hotspot, we will address that immediately, assemble our traveling team, and go out and handle those issues. We will be managing all three vaccines that will be in alignment with the requirements for the Pfizer product and for those that are 12 to 18. We will also, of course, have the Janssen single dose and we will have the Moderna, which we've been using historically. We continue to push hard at max capacity for those to be vaccinated. Uh, as I, I don't really want to get into masks at this moment because we're going to be addressing that a little bit further, but that is an evolving uh, situation that is on multiple levels being addressed and reviewed and for guidance purposes. Uh, so we will be monitoring that closely, uh, but the vaccinations clearly hinge on some of those requirements. We are out there, we are still vaccinating. We are still testing where necessary. The majority of the tests are those that are actually going in for pre-surgical events. They're all gone out because they simply don't feel well and they're tested as a result, or they're in facilities and they're being tested when they're being brought in from other areas of the, the country. Auto dealerships nationwide are struggling to deal with a lack of inventory, but Sayeda Trudeau, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, and Pahrump is working hard to ensure options for its customers. General Sales Manager Jesse Quiroz says they've leveraged all available resources to keep cars, trucks, and SUVs on their lot. We've been very lucky. The last year and a half has been really trying for Sayeda Trudeau. Um, you know, we really did our best to try to make sure we had inventory for our customers. Um, Don did a great job just... I mean, it seemed like he was always gone traveling, you know, throughout the United States trying to find the right vehicles. I heard this. The right price. <laughs> he, he's never home. Um, so he's done a great job there. And because of Tom and Don's relationship with the factory, we've been lucky. Um, as you can see, we do have vehicles. Uh, we do have a variety of vehicles, even though most dealership are having a, so a shortage right now. Um, but, you know, having said that, we still need inventory. You know, we're selling vehicles at a surprising rate. Because of the shortages, prices have gone up. So if you were looking to, to trade your car in or maybe sell your car some months ago and you decided not to for whatever reason, right now, and I know you hear this from a lot of uh, car guys, but right now definitely is the best time to sell your car. We, we try to focus on what our customers want, and we do have a wide variety of, uh, of people in Pahrump um, that like different things. So we try to make sure we have different SUVs, cars, trucks, different makes, different models foreign and domestic. We're a little island out here mm -hmm. um, and we're unique compared uh, to Las Vegas. You know, we have special needs out here when it comes to mostly trucks. We sell a lot of trucks, a lot of four-wheel drives, mm -hmm. uh, which they don't sell a lot of in Las Vegas or say California for that matter. Exactly. We don't have the fees that they have in Las Vegas. Uh, the taxes are lower that you're going to pay the, uh, than in Las Vegas. Uh, there's a lot of benefits here. Plus, you know, we're a humble dealership. You know, we've been here a long time. Don and Tom have done a great job not putting the dealership in debt. We're not in debt. Uh, so we're able to pass on those savings to our customers, and we're proud of that. We also have the RV Center on Highway 160. How's that going? Oh, it's going great. It's going great. A lot of people buying RVs. Yeah. Uh, and we have great inventory there, too. You, you can always come down to Side Joe anytime. We're multi open Monday through Friday uh, from 8.30 till 7 o'clock at night. Saturday, we're open from 8 to 6. Uh, my name's Jesse. I'm the general sales manager. You can come in and speak to me anytime. Don Trudeau, the owner, always has an open door policy. You can come talk to him anytime. We definitely take pride in taking care of our community. And you can always reach us at 775-727-0102. Um, our website is um, .com. Um So please come on down to see us. And if you're looking to sell your car, we'd love to see you. When we come back, we'll have your Cleveland Clinic health report. So stick around. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. Well, many older people are starting to make summer plans now that they are vaccinated. But a Cleveland Clinic doctor says they still need to be careful. And I think that the vaccination process has really opened up uh, more of the world we want to come back to, uh, but there's still a couple of caveats. So not everyone has gotten vaccinated yet, so it's not 100% safe. The other thing is that even though the vaccines are really good, 
it's still not 100%. Dr. Ronan Factora specializes in geriatric medicine for Cleveland Clinic. He says he gets asked by patients all the time about what activities might be safe to do. In general, anything that does not include large crowds where there may be a lot of strangers. So, for example, going to a busy restaurant, bar, or amusement park. When it comes to wearing masks, the CDC recently announced they're no longer needed if you are vaccinated, except when traveling or otherwise required. However, Dr. Factora says you may want to still consider wearing one if you're going to be around others who are not vaccinated. He knows it can be frustrating, but we're not out of the woods just yet. We just have to be patient. This is a process that takes time. Uh, we have vaccine availability. Now it's a process of trying to get that vaccine out to the people who want it and try to encourage those who are hesitant or don't want to take it to do take it so that we can move forward faster. Dr. Factora says isolation and depression have been a big problem during the pandemic, so it's great that older people can finally socialize again. He says it's also another reason for their family members to get vaccinated. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Hi, it's John Kohler staring out the KPVM weather window. This is Pahrump Valley High School. Graduation is coming soon. KPVM will be there to record history in the making. You can get a copy of that from us. And I'll tell you all about the weather here in just a second. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee. The dollop of sour cream on your burrito. The melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious. Undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios, and this is your Wednesday report. Oh, look at you, Fernley Fallon and Tonopah. You're all up in the uh, upper 70s. Carson City, somebody left the refrigerator door open. Not quite sure why, why you only get to 72, but uh, it's the magic of being you. Goldfield, 83 degrees. Beatty up to 90, 94 in Amargosa, 97 in Las Vegas, 107 out in Death Valley. And here in the paradise of Pahrump, where the air is pure, the grass is green, and we've got all kinds of burly winds coming at us. How about that? 91 degrees is our current temperature. Uh, out of the south-southwest at 20 miles per hour. That'll shift slightly, but uh, it's going to get a little bit crazy here in the next couple of days. Sun rose this morning at 534. It's going to set this evening about 746, and the winds are going to be kicking up over the next couple hours and the next day and a half. Oh, boy, it's going to be kind of crazy. Check this out tomorrow. 30 mile per hour winds and they're clear skies, 82 degrees for a high. Uh, all that warmth is going to get uh, blown out. We're going to get about 65 degrees for a high on Friday and some clouds coming in to uh, give us a little shade too uh, to contend with. We'll uh, be creeping up those temperatures over the weekend into the 80s come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, clear skies next week. Uh, but yeah, uh, robust winds uh, alleged to be coming our way and real soon. Watch out for that and we'll see you on the other side. Here comes uh, Missy and Deanna. All right. Thank you so much, John. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. I'm Missy Kohler. Thank you so very much for watching. We hope you have a great evening. Good night.